All right, let's talk about the concept of pheromones. We learned uh, early in the semester that an allomone is an airborne signal that creates communication from one species to another species, like flowers and bees. Pheromones is the same airborne signal that communica allows communication be within a species. Right, usually having to do with territorial issues or mostly sexual reproduction. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to be talking about here. Now we know that pheromones exist in certainly in insects and in many mammals it's been identified. But the question of whether it really exists in humans is still up in the air. Now pheromones are volatile compounds and all volatile means is airborne and able to move freely. Released into the air that are unconsciously sensed and then they could stimulate the perceptions of attractiveness and even sexual arousal in other members of the species. So, <clears throat> is it possible that human pheromones exist? We know it exists in non-human animals. It's very common, actually. Non-human animals have something called a vomeronasal organ, a VNO. This is a, a special sort of sensory receptor, in, usually in their nasal cavity somewhere. Uh, we'll talk about a little later where it exists in rats. And that's there to receive pheromones. So typically when the female of the species goes into heat or estrus, she emits her pheromones and they're picked up by the males and males uh, get the signal that she is ready for mating. We see this of course in cats and dogs and whatnot. Now humans. If pheromones do exist, they probably are secreted from the sweat pores, logically in the armpits, and since females typically emit these pheromones to signal to the male that they're ready for mating, then vaginal secretions can also be where they would be secreted. There is some evidence that a couple steroids, uh, one found in uh, androstenol found in females and androstenone found in males, some evidence does suggest that it does influence behavior, sexual behavior, but it's not fantastic evidence. Also, there are these vaginal aliphatic acids. Some brilliant scientist came up with a beautiful name for them, calls them copulins. Okay, copulins. You got to appreciate that. Apparently, there are six times that have been, six different types that have been found in primates, and one-third of human women have these six copulins. They tend to increase in supply just before a woman ovulates. Now, that's a bit strange. Only a third have been found to have it. But I think if you hear this whole story, you may see why that is. Now, the other side of the equation, do these males have uh, vomeral nasal organs? And this is a big controversy. Some people argue that the VNO does exist. It's been found, blah, blah, blah. But what does it do? There's evidence that there are no receptors in it. There's evidence that the VNO that scientists have identified don't, don't even connect to the nervous system. And if they do connect, they involve they, they are linked to genes that really don't work in humans anymore. These are called pseudogenes. These are genes left over from evolution. That's what vestigial means. Vestigial means from the past. So does this exist in some people? Maybe. Is it functional? Probably not. But maybe for some people it is, and that's where it gets kind of strange. Maybe this notion of one-third of humans having this, maybe it does work for some humans. Maybe it's, it's an evolutionary trait that we have been getting rid of because we have different ways of signaling mating in humans than having to use this unconscious sense. Anyway, there is some evidence for it. Martha McClintock, 1971, did the classic study, showed uh, menstrual cycle synchronization in females in the dormitories. There's, this is controversial. There's been studies that came out and not been able to show the same thing. Others have supported it, so it's still kind of up in the air. McClintock and Stern did another study in 98 with armpit swabs where they took host females from different stages of their menstrual cycle, swabbed their armpits, and put that under the nose of women from different stages of the menstrual cycle, and they showed that they could shift the recipient woman's cycle. So this armpit odor, this supposed pheromone, shifted these women's reproductive cycles. Evidence in support. There's also a host of evidence, as we can see from the, as we move down this slide here, that if you look at images of women who are ovulating, women who are in the ovul ovulation cycle, or you expose men to women in the ovulation cycle, 
all these things have been found. Men have rated them as having more attractive body scent, better attractiveness, better body symmetry, uh, decreased waist to ratio, even higher verbal creativity. Okay, so men seem to be reacting in some way to women when they're in this ovulation cycle, this most fertile part of their cycle. Studies have also shown that men engage in more mate guarding behavior. Beautiful phrase right there. That means they stay home with their woman. That means they're, they're more alert. They're more sensitive. They're, they pay more attention to their females during this phase. I think maybe because they're afraid they may go out and cheat if they don't. That's one of the arguments. And then finally, the last study, one of my favorites, done, of course, by three male scientists, three male graduate students. Miller was the lead article. They decided they were going to go look at exotic dancers, pole dancers, and measure lap dances and how much the women made. They asked them two simple questions. What stage were you on in your menstrual cycle? And how much money did you make tonight? And, of course, if you're on the pill, all bets are off because that changes your menstrual cycle and should seriously affect your um, emission of pheromones. So the women dancers who were on the pill served as the control. Now the women who weren't on any type of chemical birth control is shown right here. And you see this dramatic effect in women during the fertile phase, during the ovulation phase. They made considerably more money, significantly more money, just during their ovulation phase. Now this is not only a great study done by three men with an excuse to go to you know, um, strip clubs, which is hilarious in and of itself, but it does offer support for this notion of human pheromones in a very creative way. So, is the jury out? No. Do human pheromones exist? We don't know. There's some evidence in favor. There's some evidence against. So, uh, we'll still have to wait and see.